Welcome to the Plant Spirit Podcast on connecting with plant consciousness and the healing wisdom of nature. I'm your host, Sarah Artemisia, and I am absolutely delighted to introduce our next guests to the show today. Pip Waller and Lucy Wells are plant spirit medicine healers and founders of Touched by Nature Plant Spirit Medicine. With a background in plant spirit medicine, herbalism, and energetic healing systems, they are also authors of several books, including Touched by Nature, Plant Spirit Medicine Journeys. So Pip and Lucy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, it's great to, to be with you, Sarah. I'm so excited for our chat today and our mutual love of plant spirits. So let's dive in and And I'd love to hear from your perspective, what role do you perceive the plant spirits really having for human evolution at this point in history? Ah, well, I would say that the simple thing is we as humans really need to get our perspective in order. A lot of havoc has been caused in our world in our our health systems and in the environmental degradation by our ignorance, our ignorance of perspective. So this is all coming to a head at the moment. And uh, from our perspective, the plants are here to help us. They're like beautiful light beings based on earth to support us becoming ourselves much more fully and with integrity and and humility and so we can live with heart so we can really find out really what our place in the grand scheme of things is because we've had it so wrong and everything is uh, shouting back back at us come on humans you know wake up because the the whole of the living divine world is telling us so um I, I can't think of of a of a more beautiful and abundant way of of helping in the healing at this point in history than calling on the the generosity and the 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 abundant help that's being offered by by the plants beings. They just really know how to be themselves in and live in the world wherever they are actually even even quite often adapting to fairly harsh circumstances they just know how to be in the world in harmony with what's around them and uh, that's something that we aren't so good at we've kind of the modern way of living also they know how, they know they're connected they know how to be they're connected directly with the earth they 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 bring they accept the the energy of above the, the energy of the sky the sun and so on they're absolutely dancing with all of the elements that make up life all the time and uh, and they have that incredible loving generous always giving nature you know I mean, you do get the occasional grumpy one, don't you, when you're sort of talking to them, they'll give you a talking to sometimes. But the fundamental outpouring of giving, which is which is their relationship with humans, they're kind of always teaching us. That's a bit that we really need to learn as well, because we've forgotten about exchange and and we've forgotten about the, the giving and receiving and exchange and generosity are like when I say we've forgotten, hopefully we haven't forgotten and and our, your lovely listeners haven't forgotten. But as a culture, the big, the kind of steamrolling drive of what's what's called laughingly really called progress, really. I mean, uh, it's as forgotten yeah. about generosity. And civilization. Yes. <laughs> as if that actually means something greater than uh, how we how we lived for the longest time on on this beautiful planet 
yeah, so the plants, they, they, they're like, I do think they're trying to speak more and more, wave, you know, trying to get people's attention more and more in so many ways. I also yeah. think they're like emissaries, aren't they, or agents of the Great Mother? Mm. You know, they're coming directly from her abundance, and um, they're, they're, they have their particular qualities. So they're easier for us to relate with than the the enormity that's unfathomable of the the great uh, benefic- beneficence of the earth. Mm. Mm. Nice, so beautiful. I love hearing everything that you just shared there, and truly agree that plants are light beings on the earth, and that they are living in harmony all the time, and that we when we learn to read and study how they do this, we can understand how to do that better in ourselves. And one of the things that I know that you also work very deeply with is this aspect of how we can collaborate with the plant spirits and work with them in any realm of life, which I feel very strongly about that as well. I mean, the plants help me with my spreadsheets, even like they help me with the most granular things that from the outside, a person might think there might never be plants involved with that. And in your case, Pip, having worked as an herbalist and Lucy as a a Qigong practitioner in your case, how would you explain what the difference is when you include plant spirits in that work versus when you don't? Mm. So I think, I mean, it's difficult to First of all, obviously, well, maybe not obviously, but when you're a herbalist, a medical herbalist, in a sense, you can't really exclude them. They're always, if you're using, working with plants in any way, the the plant spirits are present. And in fact, the plant spirits are just present everywhere because even in cities, they grow up between the cracks and the pavement, don't they? So, but I trained as as a herbalist in the Western tradition in, it was very Western medical. It was like, uh, you know anatomy and physiology and biochemistry and so on and pharmacognosy and pharmacology of plants and active constituents and all that and actually it was fascinating I, I quite liked science I was a bit of a, a sort of nerd when I was great they didn't have the word nerd when I was young but if if they did I would have been one <laughs> and uh, yeah I used to make air fix models of plants when I was not plants <laughs> of the human body when I was like nine <laughs> but so I loved all that but it's like because it has a way of thinking about disease, thinking about the it's the biomedical model really for the body and for health and disease. And it doesn't, it was very difficult for me in my my training itself to actually really um, feel and understand how to, I always had this feeling of the plant spirits and them as beings and as people, I'm going to say actually for me, but they, but I didn't really know how to marry that with my, with my actual work, with how I was trained to work with people. So, um, and there's, I think there's a thing. It's like if you came to me, for example, back in the day, and I was a herbalist, and you had eczema, you know, I'd have a whole way of understanding that and thinking about it, and I'd have a lot of pl- different plants that could, you know, improve. Maybe it depends. I mean, it wouldn't be about just eczema, but it might be. You might need your circulation to the skin might need opening and encouraging, for example, or, you know, your liver might need supporting, so on and so forth. So it was you could say it was holistic in a certain way of thinking about the systems and the body. But it was also really pretty physical, even to the point of thinking, oh, well, you might use a nervine or you might you know, encourage relaxation. But there was a place for me always of this real hunger to understand or how. I wanted to touch people really deeply. I wanted to be touched really deeply. The places that I felt I was wounded, you know, and couldn't quite, you know, how to make sense of the world. And the, the I'm going to say like the really kind of gross imbalances that are in the world all around us that, that um, for me, it's that when you start really thinking, well, actually plant, in terms of plant spirits, like this part's my friend. And uh, it's got this kind of certain energy or feeling that I, I can, I mean, for me, I sort of often see them as people, but I can get the real feeling for that. And then when I, at working with other people, if I invite that in, 
and come I'll invite my friend in and say, can you help this person that I'm trying to help out? Something so mysterious and miraculous happens that uh, it definitely goes far beyond what, what I was able to do with herbs. I'm not saying other people. I think there are herbalists that work very much, you know, they found another way of melding plants, the, the spirits or whatever with plants. But I didn't quite find it until I until I really just started going for plant spirit medicine. Yeah. And then uh, it really is like being either a matchmaker or maybe a kind of, uh, um, I don't know, someone, whoever it is that, you know, makes the introduction. Oh, look, you need to meet this person. Could you come in and, you know, and then it's like, wow, I I can't even begin to understand what happens there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Beautifully put, Pip. And I, I would say as someone who spent years learning Tai Chi forms and uh, Qigong sequences and starting to understand about the bioelectric nature of the flow of energy through the channels in the our human systems. That, uh, you know, I loved all that and I loved the idea that you needed to really make space inside and the the, um, the the centers, the dantians, the centers of energy that, you know, relaxing, opening and becoming aware. It's sort of like a huge uh, initiation itself to to follow those practices and be disciplined and work with them regularly so that you really start to see the world in a different way. And I was very interested to study acupuncture. And for one reason or or another, that didn't happen. But then working with the plant spirits, being introduced to this way of being able to introduce the energy, the spiritual energy of a plant into the human system was like actually mind-blowing. Because not only are you... um, helping the energy flow, which is obviously the purpose of, of Qigong and, and Tai Chi, is increasing the, the, the flow through the channels in, internally. But you're introducing, via the different plants that we make friends with, you're introducing these qualities, these qual- very specific qualities that have elemental correspondences, which is... Uh, I mean, it's it's so profound. So my experience of receiving plant spirit medicine um, alongside uh, acupuncture, for example, was these this this loving quality is the best way. It's so difficult to give language to energy, isn't it? But uh, I ha- well, just for example, one plant that I journeyed with, I experienced this kind of fountain of golden light just flowing up and round and through and from the heart and like in this toroidal flow. It was kind of very amazing with this 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 love. It's just like pure love. So that quality, I'm. I'm not saying that it doesn't exist if you can get the get yourself really tuned in to the universal chi. There's a bit little bit like this saying about the the plants being in intermediaries or or emissaries or agents themselves. And when we wake up to that, then we can help do this connecting into this sort of divine exchange with the potential, the great loving potential so uh i still practice do my qigong and um, uh, tai chi regularly i think they're fantastic disciplines and obviously rooted in in huge um lineage and tradition but adding in this specifics of these uh qualities of our plant friends um 
makes just gives another dimension. They're like mm-hmm. naughty little fairies sometimes, aren't they? I mean, sometimes <laughs> they're these great, generous, wise beings, but sometimes they're like little naughty little fairies that just come in and g- jiggle things up. One of my patients used to say he experienced the treatments like he imagined or felt it like of these, like they were like, it was like a gnome, the plant spirit, and it would go in and dig away at this root of his illness, you know, dig away and dig away, like every treatment uh, 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 to get a bit more of it out. It was uh, <laughs> it was amazing. Can I tell a little story about the, also, I just thought of this story about the difference between being a herbalist, and only a herbalist and a herbalist and plant spirit medicine healer. So it, I'd only just started, I just qualified and, and I started, I had herbal clients, you know, and I started treat, bringing in the plant spirit medicine as well. And this person came to me, This it was a woman who came with really terrible varicose veins. I mean, they were really, really seriously difficult. She didn't want, I think had she had them stripped once, but anyway, she didn't want any, there was nothing for medicine, orthodox medicine to do for her. So she... She wasn't particularly bothered how they looked, but they were painful, you know, like draggy and painful. And so I gave her, you know, a herbalist will will think of, you know, herbs straight away. But for example, horse chestnut and a few other things. And I gave her a cream and a lotion right to apply. But I also gave her plant spirit medicine. And she, why, the plant spirit medicine had nothing to do with the varicose veins. The plant spirit medicine for me was she she I saw I smelt a certain smell in her and I saw a color on her and and I I knew that there was a certain plant that would be great for her and she had had a story this person had a very very hard story which I won't go into here because it was you know her private very very painful and difficult a mother wound and then not being able to have children in a nutshell and um was had had a very sad lot of very sad things so I hadn't even noticed but she always wore black this woman always wore black from head to toe and after maybe the fourth treatment she she came in and she said well you know the varicose vein the herbs had worked really nicely they 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 weren't bothering her in the same way you know it wasn't hurting but she said but she said oh but look and I bought I bought a blue cardigan and she I hadn't and I was like oh that's a nice car she said no but I haven't worn she was in her perhaps late 40s and I haven't worn anything but black since I was 15 and she'd suddenly had this feeling to buy and that is plant spirit that is the plant spirits at work that is not oh it's made all my hair stand up in that very nice way Mm. that's the plant spirits at work and I feel like you know I often say this I don't really know what I'm doing you know uh, and I don't mind having that attitude because I think it's you know it's, it's good to keep humble really I don't I'm not really doing anything I'm just friends with the plants and I ask them to come and they do things so especially right at the beginning I definitely didn't know what I was doing there and even more you know so it was such a great like oh you know this was interesting something else happening a whole different dimension yeah of touching somebody somewhere you know yeah yeah thanks yeah Yeah, I love how you just shared that those two examples of the different ways that people experience the plant spirits, whether that's through the very visual, like you were describing that gnome figure or through that aspect of the energetic of color being introduced into this woman's experience. And I'm curious if you could tell us a little bit more about that in terms of how do the plants communicate with you? And do you think that they communicate in the same way for everyone? Well, with me, I didn't even know when I was was doing my Tai Chi under the trees, I was so dense. I didn't even know that um, I was in the middle of a conversation. And it took a few things to happen before I twigged. Oh, I'm being I'm being actually instructed here. Because I I'm quite dense and a little bit slow. People <laughs> will bear that out that I'm much slower than that she is in terms of our um, styles. But this this awareness came through. It wasn't like a voice. It wasn't like a a, a visual. It was through a knowing. 
And now with more experience, um, I have a place where I practice and I've, I live in a cottage called Yew Tree Cottage. So I, I work now a lot with the yew trees and they, they just give me uh, thoughts because I understand that it's not, they're not my ideas. So it's coming through a very, um, if I say vague, but it's not specific, but it's uh, an energetic. And uh, I have though also met with a plant spirit in a human form, which um, completely, completely shocked me. So I'd, I'd been going out to do this journey and I was in a hurry and I, um, I just couldn't settle. And I was just thinking, well, I'll just quickly check in with this plant. And this was back a few years, quite a few years ago. I'll just check in and then I've got to go and do what I'm going to do. And I did, I did what I thought was a plant study, you know, and kind of had a, a sort of vague idea of something. And then I, I went to walk back to do the thing that had been feeling all urgent. And there I met this uh, very elderly gentleman with really luminous violet eyes. And I'd been sitting with Violet. And he just said, ah, oh, good afternoon. And uh, I said, oh, you know, he said, ah, oh, I've just been, oh, I've just been, oh, my dear. Like really slowly he was talking like that. I've just been for a, um, I've been in the hospital. Oh, I had to have an operation. And I, I was sort of trying to get away from him because I was in a hurry. And then at, at some point I clocked that what was happening and this beautiful, this, it, it was just beautiful. It was like a um, time just ev evaporated and all the stress of the mental cogs thinking one thing stopped. And I just took the time I needed with this extraordinary being. And then at a certain point, he let me go. He said, well, I must, I must be going now. So he went off. And I lived in this really small town. I'd never, I, I had never seen this person. I never saw him again. And I would have known him if he had lived there. So I didn't look back because I had that sense. So that was one, you know, those are two very different ways that, that I experience. And then when we work with people introducing them to uh, plant spirit work, it's everybody has their own way because it's about what's in the way of us, really. And that's going to be different for each person. You know, the conditions and experiences of each of our lives kind of either helps us be open or closes us down. So I think it's as many and various as there are people. What would you say, Pip? Yeah, definitely super varied. I mean, um, I reckon in our book, we've got this chapter about being called by the plants. And it's like, because that was our idea. It's like at some point in your life, if you're working with plants in any way, at some point they decided that they were going to have you. So, you know, and as Lucy said, sometimes you don't even realise, you know, that you've been uh, nobbled by them, you know, or, or recruited or what was it? Press, press ganged. <laughs> Only, <laughs> you know, so I, I looking back at it, I think, oh, I remember when I was a little girl and I used to go, there were woods near where I lived. And um, I just, I can, the plants that, that grew there that I connected with, I still like, I'm so excited now when I see them. I'm still like, 
I've got a real thing about red campion and primroses and and actually bluebells as well now. Like oh, I'm I'm really lucky and I've got a little wood here near where I live, which is just it's paradise. And um, so there's that. And then I became a her- I got sort of you know recruited as a herbalist really without really knowing what I was doing. I was quite young and got into it. But then the uh, and then during herbal training which, like I said, was very sciencey. I had this like extracurricular activity with um, Elizabeth Brooke. She's a really wonderful herbalist. She's a writer and astrologer and a kind of witchy herbalist. You might have heard of her, English woman. And she, ha- she did this group. So there was a bunch of us that used to go to her and do – she taught us how to meditate with plants. So we would make, have a tea and we would hold the dried plant usually – and we would, she would take us on like a guided visualization. So this is, you know, uh, uh, deliberate trying to meet the plant. So we would Im- see the plant as a landscape, and then we would walk in the landscape, and then the plant would appear as in human form, and we'd have conversations and so forth. And that was so. That was like my first experience of like really deliberately trying to, you know, uh, experience plants as something other than. I don't know what what do we get taught they are just some kind of random inanimate object lost like everything else nothing really in a certain way nothing really matters in our world does it in a certain way you know the, in the modern the consumer world but then I learned to and then I learned to journey um my 20s I learned to journey I went on a debt Michael Harner came to London and I did this great I had a great uh weekend learning to do the shamanic journey the harna method which is how what most people do when they talk about the drum journey and uh and putting that together with plants because i had done also gertian science has this way where you sit and you examine you look and you draw and you try to open your senses to what's there in front and then of course i read i came across our teacher's book plant spirit medicine which was written he wrote that in 1995 and coined the term plant spirit medicine to try and describe what he was doing and he'd learned to journey with michael harner as well so it was something something like that so yeah i um i journey very i get quite uh, visual in a certain way Uh, I get like images and pictures, although they're not visions in front of my eyes. They sort of happen somewhere in the back of my head or it's hard to describe. But I but we've taught Lucy and I together and many, 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 many people to journey. People have such different ways. Some people experience the, the, the whole plant as coming into them and just changing and changing their energy or uh, doing things in different parts of their body. It's kind of kinesthetic somehow. Other people like, like hear things and, uh, um, and other people have it's all f- um, it's not figurative at all it's all like colors and shapes and you know very probably a bit psychedelic but I would really like to can I read a story from our book yeah please this, do this is our book is touched by nature plants but medicine journeys we wanted to um, we just wanted pe- we want more people to know about about plants book medicine so We got stories from lots and lots of different people. And this is really, it's a collection of stories. So this one is a lovely story that's from Anne Lynn, who's a plant foot medicine healer and a a, a Marikame, uh, uh, now a a shamanic healer in the Huichol tradition. But she's just moved to Ireland. She's an English woman, just moved to Ireland. So many years ago, I had a strong experience with rosemary that was to change my whole life. I'd been out in the woods. On a cold, wet and windy day, I was feeling chilled to the bone. When I got home, I was greeted by a huge pile of rosemary cuttings. My partner had been pruning the rosemary bush in our garden and had obviously been very over-enthusiastic. I was very upset. I loved that rosemary bush, which grew just outside our kitchen door and was worried that it wouldn't recover. I remember going to what was left of the bush in tears and apologising to it. I then ran a hot bath and on impulse, I added a whole load of rosemary clippings to the bath water before I got in for a good long soak. After this event, I started to have some strange experiences. Every time I walked down our street past my neighbour's front gardens, I would hear a little old lady's voice calling, hello, hello. I could never see anyone in the gardens. 
But after a while of this happening, I noticed that the sound appeared to be coming from the rosemary bushes. This was not a comforting thought. (laughs) I started to think I was going crazy. That is a very common issue for people. They think they're going crazy with plants. Anyway, talking to them. This voice kept calling me, and every time there was a rosemary bush which seemed to be shimmering and glowing. One time I was in London walking past a row of window boxes full of rosemary plants and I heard the voice again so loud and clear from these little plants. I was on my way to a herbal medicine class with a wonderful teacher called Christopher Headley that day. He he's sadly isn't with us anymore, but was a, a real fabulous herbalist. So at the end of the class, I went up to talk with him about my experience. He told me he thought this was the spirit of the rosemary plant trying to communicate with me and that this was cutting edge work and that I should read a book called Plant Spirit Medicine by our teacher who recently died. I told I had told a friend about my rosemary experience and she put me in touch with her friend, Simon Lilly. My partner and I went on a weekend course with Simon and Sue Lilly, learning how to journey and communicate with the spirit of trees. It was an extraordinary experience which spurred me on to read the Plant Spirit Medicine book. I loved it so much I read it three times in succession. Here was someone who not only had experienced the same phenomenon, but had developed a whole system of healing with it. I was hooked. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Such a great example. Mm -hmm. And that aspect that you brought up of how sometimes when people first start communicating with plants, they can think oh, am I going crazy? Or, you know, there could be all these doubts, the mental doubts that get get in the way. And I'm curious in your experience, you know, in, in the world that we live in where communing with plants is still considered relatively marginal, how do you encourage people to start engaging with nature on a deeper level? I think we need to understand that there's a continuum of time that has stopped us from communing. Um, we've always done it it's a completely natural thing it's a birthright it's a way of being in the world it's actually relatively recent in terms of human history that things have stopped and become marginal so it's like the awareness of the wound the awareness of the fragmentation of the the um, traditions so It's so common that people say, well, I think I'm mad or I'm so glad to be in this group where other people are also saying that they can hear and communicate with with plants. It's it's often really experienced as a great relief. And uh, so to to really start feeling confident, we need to to really address that there are uh, different kinds of ways and doorways that people are going to find that will open for them and just to try to normalize the the experience and I think like I said before because we've all got so many different conditions uh, and constraints and wounds uh, it's not going to be the same for everybody and it's actually dependent a lot is intricately connected with our emotional lives so to to get to grips with the you know the fear I know I really had to come to grips with quite significant I'm gonna say almost terror to start engaging you know there was some bit of me that had dissociated because of really what was done to people who uh, talked to plants and used this kind of energy healing. So it's a wonder that any kind of herbal law has actually survived because there was such, there was genocide as a result of it. So um, I think, you know, just to allow for that to have been a, a, a reality and quite frankly, Sadly, it still is a reality for many of the indigenous people of the world whose whose ways of living are being squashed and terminated by the, you know, the forces of power and greed and um, monopolies. 
So we, it, we, we're not done yet, which I suppose kind of brings us back round to the initial question about what's going on, particularly at this time in, in history, that really it's very pivotal to, to help each person that's interested gain the courage to open that doorway and it's it's both really personal and really universal at the same time Mm. yeah that's there's quite a lot going on in in uh, the UK at the moment to do with healing the witch wound and to do with honoring and um uh because obviously well I say obviously, but yes, obviously, because the way history is taught, it's, you know, you don't generally get taught, oh, look, we did this genocide in the past. It's not, uh, it's all, it's all covered up, isn't it? And, um, but the way that history is taught is as if it's, it's not any particular big deal or like, as if they really were people that deserved somehow to be, you know, destroyed. But the fear that, that remains in the, in the, um, the psyche here about about our own indigenous spirituality our own you know the our, we would see it as a birthright as a kind of that plant spirit medicine communicating with plants is a is a kind of what you could call household shamanism that's for everyone it's not the same as you know the deep shamanic like our friend Anne. i read her story she's a plants from medicine healer but she also done a whole years and years long apprenticeship in a particular uh, you know existent um tradition mexican tradition so she's a shaman in that tradition but it plants put medicines for and that's amazing that stuff but it's not for everyone but what is for everyone is to really start waking up opening the senses and waking up to what because the f- sheer joy of the con- of when you feel the connection, when you realize, oh, these plants, these are beings that are alive. I'm not alone in the world. You know, my little light, we're born alone. It's so bloody miserable, isn't it? We're born alone and you die alone and it's a veil of tears. Bloody hell. How did it ever get uh, adopted as a, as a great, you know, philosophy? We're not alone. We're completely and at all times surrounded by beings, loving beings. That And when you start making friends, and they wave at you, don't they? And everywhere you go, you've got friends. And when you go to a, a foreign country, human term, foreign country, you see plants that are either they're just like the ones at home or they're like, oh, you're so similar. You're like a close cousin. Or sometimes they're really excitingly different. And then you go, oh, you know, now I really don't know you. What are you all about? And but you've you're it's a community. We're all part of the mycelium web, aren't we? You know, that mycelium web of connection that the plants have got in, in the soil that we all now is increasingly known as so important. We are part of that. We've got that. And sadly, I mean, I include myself in that. It's not easy for us to be connected to other humans. You know, we've got a lot of wounds around that. Uh, disappointments and broken you know uh, attachment issues in you know many of our cases and you know things that make it can make it hard and and uh and and yet the plants always drawing us on so i mean obviously we what do what you know what else do we do the reason we re- wrote the book actually was to get the look, let's t- these stories are so great let's get them out there let's you know we teach weekends we try and get people to we try and get people into our you know so that there's more of us crazy mad people that talk to plants that's basically <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I totally feel you on the web of connection, that mycelial web of connection that is all around the planet through the plants and the connection. I mean, the connection with plants brought us together. It's it's incredible. And just how there are friends all around, no matter where you go, if there are plants, it's absolutely incredible. And, you know, I'd love to hear how would you say that the plant spirits really support you in your life's work? They've become the life's work. Yes. <laughs> they won't let us go. <laughs> it's, it's like, wow, it's been a roller coaster, like since being really switched into it, you know, uh, and, you know, the dawning of awareness of this 
very different perspective that it becomes completely central it can't be anything else so um it it's difficult to say where they don't support in fact i don't think there is any area where they don't support actually i'd say it like that and we you know we're fortunate in having this particular system so we're recipients regularly of of the medicine that we also um help impart to other people so i love to make sure that i regularly receive healing plant spirit from the plant spirits to just to to keep everything ticking along and like i say you know every day i do my i go and commune and get my instructions <laughs> so i think it, it it's more it's more that there isn't an area where they're not supporting yeah now we we've been we're, we're in harness and that's it yeah there's no way out <laughs> yeah I, I think I honestly think they got me when I was really young you know and my parents got into herbal medicine got had, her, went to a herbalist and got treated and for various things and then I had always going to be going to be a doctor when I was little because I loved medicine I mean even when I was four I was saying no that's what I'm going to do but then I, in teens, I wasn't that into, I didn't particularly like chemistry and physics, you know, and that's what you had to do then. You know, I loved biology, but I didn't like chemistry and physics. So that was it. You can't do medicine. It's the, it's the end. Then you had to do math, chemistry, physics and biology. Like, so my parents were like, well, you could be a herbalist. They were desperate to get me to do something, you know, like, and I wasn't. I was like, let's see what happens. But anyway, I ended up on this herbal medicine course. And I remember, you know, I was only 19 when I started. I remember thinking, oh, you know. Um, I suppose it will do. I'm not, I actually I applied for a job as a milk woman for this Unigate dairy, this big dairy in London, you know, delivery at the same time as I applied for the herbal course. And I got that job as well, but I thought, oh, I'll do that. I got on the herbal course, so I thought, oh, I'll do that. And then I had this, uh, I had a, a breakdown really when I was 27. I'm adopted. So when I was 27, I traced my natural mother. And I had this huge, really like a breakthrough of massive old feelings. I didn't even know I was lumbering around and uh, I couldn't work. I was in such a dark place, really. I, I was I'd say I was somewhere where I didn't believe in things getting better. I could feel myself for almost a year at, at this crossroad. And one way was just complete darkness and nothingness, despair and de degradation and everything awful. And the other way was healing and I couldn't really believe in in the healing so I couldn't practice because I thought well I don't believe it I mean honestly I just thought I just didn't believe in anything getting better so I couldn't do it for about a year maybe and then I, and I had various therapy and healing and all sorts of things and then I was starting to put myself back together maybe a year and a half and I thought I need to get a different job then you know and I went to the library in England. You can go to the library and they have a book of all the careers in the country. It's a huge book, just like a paragraph of each one. And I read this whole thing. And the only thing I was really interested in doing was the plants, the herbal medicine. I thought, oh, OK. And then I started back practicing as a herbalist. This was, you know, before I, I mean, like 10 years before I became a plant spirit, got into the plant spirit. So, yeah. I just think they've carried on. They're very patient. Like Lucy says, oh, I'm fast, she's slow. But actually, I'm too fast. I can't, you know, I have to slow down. Like to, to you know, they're, they're always sort of saying, oi, you know, and I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I've already gone past, you know. So I've learned to uh, uh, go back again, go back and round again and listen to them. And, uh, and I've got really excited recently. I don't think this answers the question, but about like the whole communities of plants instead of so like not just one plant but I'm like I mean I feel like when we were connecting together and grounding at the beginning and I often do this I do it when I'm in my treatment room I, I bring the woods which are just down the road I kind of bring them in here you know like and, and so it's all those plants like 20 plants all in a, quite a small area like and how that feels how it feels the to be amongst them all, like a party of, I don't know, oh, it's exciting. Yeah, thank you. And of course, supporting in work. I mean, I'm a primer healer. That's my, I, that's my, that's what I do, my biggest bit of work. And then we, Lucy and I teach, we've been teaching introductions 
to journeying and connecting with plants for maybe about seven years. And now we're teaching her our first full proper plant spirit medicine healer training. And it's the first one that's happened in the UK for a really long, of this particular kind, the kind that we do, which is a five element, uses a five element paradigm for diagnosis and, and protocols, treatment protocols. For a long time, it's the first one that's happened. And we're very excited because we've got an amazing group of lovely people, big group, and they love singing. So as well as all the lovely stuff we're learning we're having great sing songs <laughs> amazing well tell us how can people find out more about you and your work uh they can visit www.touchedbynaturepsm.uk that's the website that we pip and i have got together um which we put up after we had done written the book and but it also has details of our of our courses and our online course and it's a place where you could if you wanted to buy a copy of the book there's a, a link there as well yes yeah. i forgot about our online course because that's that is about connecting with nature how uh, guiding people you know facilitating that connection with nature as it's expressed by the seasons the seasonal energy and if we say so ourselves, it is rather good. And, uh, <laughs> we, we had a lot of lot of fun making that with a lot of costume changes did, for the different made, seasons. <laughs> <laughs> running in and changing our clothes and hairstyles. It was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and so that's it, the website. Touch by nature, psm.uk. And then you can get links to my website, Lucy's website all sorts of things. I've got a YouTube channel, which is a bit neglected for the last few years, but I have got a YouTube channel, which is called Pip Waller Being Human. And I think we might be going to, I think we've started a YouTube channel for a touch by nature, actually. Well, we've but got a Facebook page, haven't we? We've got a Facebook page now. That's an advance. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Pip and Lucy. Just such a joy to have you here on the Plant Spirit Podcast. And truly, your connection with the plants radiates through in in everything that you do. So thank you so much for joining us today. Wow. Oh, thanks thank for you. having us. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. You're a delight. You are yeah. absolutely really just so delightful. It's it's so wonder it's just so wonderful that you're in the world and that your the plants have told you what to do and you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. all servants, aren't we, to them? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thanks so much for listening and joining us today on the Plant Spirit Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it and please follow to subscribe, leave a review, and look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Mm-hmm.